In the name of Jesus. Amen. So Keith and Gail, Sue, Cheryl, and Janet. Your mom did so much to prepare us for this day, but still tears come, right? It's your mom's way to serve. And so when we sat down earlier this week to plan this service out, it was really easy. She already had everything prepared. I thought, well, I'll write down all of these texts, many of which we read either at the hospital or at her home. And I'd go through them all, but here's what happened actually. So you, you brought with you a, a, a bulletin from another service. And the first text I said was uh, Job chapter 19. You said, oh, that's perfect. Mom has it right here. <laughs> oh, this is easy. <laughs> and then Revelation 7, how about that? You said, Mom's got that one too. Yeah. And then, well, I've got two possible texts. Pastor Fleming one, read one and I read the other. Well, how about Pastor Fleming's text, John 14? You said, that's perfect. It's right here. Everything was there. Everything was ready because your mom was always serving. And you know that if you had any type of interaction with her as she was teaching Sunday school or VBS, things like that, or even in her 70s when she was going to the, the Lutheran home and doing hair for the old folks, you know, <laughs> because they're so much older than her, so she'd donate her time there. And this last year, and maybe even a little bit longer, it was really frustrating for her because she wasn't able to do those things. And in those moments, it's easy to wonder, why in the world, God, do you still have me here? <laughs> Did you forget about me? I'm still here. I'm still waiting. Waiting after 17 years to be reunited with Norma. So... I, I think there's one final example of, of her service that I'd like to share with you, but it's a little surprising, I suppose. Once Marion almost had her purse stolen, right? Yeah. I mean, it was literally actually stolen. She had gone to her car to put in the groceries, and some fellow came up and offered to help her. Um, and really, he just intended to take her purse. And so as she was about to get the groceries in, he ran away with her purse, and she chased him down. <laughs> she, she got to his car and got her purse back, but in the back of the car was uh, the child. And so she, she went on and, and kind of uh, dressed him down, right? She was, she was uh, really chastising him. But uh, I think it was you, Curtis, who noted, if, if the fellow, because it was Christmas time, if he had just gone up to her and said, you know, uh, we need some help. Uh, we, we're short on money, we need some help with Christmas. And if he, he had said that, she probably would have given him all the gift cards that were tucked away in her purse. Well, what mo motivates a person to do something like that or to serve so often? Well, it's certainly love, right? It's the same reason she kept coming here Sunday after Sunday. And I, I can remember Marion always being on that side of the church always coming up on this side of the altar rail to receive the Lord's body and blood, always kneeling to confess her sins and receive the Lord's Supper, which was absolutely amazing, especially in this last year. Because in spite of her daughter saying, Mom, you can just stand and receive these things, or you can sit and confess your sins, well, she continued to insist on kneeling through the pain and coming to church even after she had had a fall. Do you remember that? She, she was bruised and she still came to church that very Sunday because she loved receiving Christ's gifts. And in spite of the, the pain, she loved receiving all of those good things that Christ would give to her. Even when she was in the hospital, right? So we, we came to her in the hospital to give her the Lord's Supper and to sing with her beautiful Savior. And there she still was confessing her sins because we, we know. We know that it's, it's not just sin which causes us to die, but sin which breaks all sorts of things within our lives. 
including the relationships that, of those that we love the most dearly. And so we need something, something that provides not only reconciliation within our families, but also the promise that this is not the end. And that is what Christ has served to her. Isn't this amazing that the one who is true God who came down in the flesh didn't come to be served by all sorts of people, but instead to serve up his life for them? True God <laughs> came to serve your mom, your grandmother. He came to die for her and rise for her, to shepherd her through this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven, to wipe away all of her tears, now they're all gone, to take away all of her pain, to assure her that this body, which was slowly going the way of the grave, would on the last day be raised. Oh, Jesus loves to serve. And Jesus loved to serve her. Jesus loves to serve you too. <laughs> And maybe that's the other reason that your mom served so many people so often. Not just the example of Christ, but the love that Christ had for her and the love that she had for him. Now, <laughs> she's being served at this beautiful feast that lasts for all eternity. I was thinking about what it must have been like on Friday morning for her. Right? <laughs> we had seen her throughout the week and wondered, when will her time be? Because the Lord didn't forget her. He remembered. And finally, she went to be with him in heaven. He even served her on that day. But what must it have been like at that moment when she's finally there? Finally with Norman. The man she spent 54 years of her life with, right? 17 years apart. Do you think Norman at that point, when she's there, said what he often would say to her, looking at his watch? It's about time there. <laughs> I don't think so, by the way. Because that's just the joyous reunion right there. But there's something even better than both of them are now able to see. Much like the resurrected Christ next to her casket this morning, they look at him and they see him in his glory, but also in his love and his mercy, for he now provides for them and their joy, and it's full. And so, I think more, most likely then what happened is they both just joined hands and started to sing like you guys today. Such beautiful singing. How can we have such joy in the midst of this sorrow and death? Because we know that this is not the end. Because we know that now Marion is free from sorrow, free from pain, free from suffering. And she waits. The waiting there, I don't think, is very long. It's long here. <laughs> she waits, though, for two things. The first is the resurrection of the body. Because Jesus has risen from the dead. This is proof positive that this faith of Marian's is a sure thing. And just as he is raised, so she too shall be raised. I expect she'll be like some of those pictures uh, at her visitation yesterday, right? I mean, she was absolutely beautiful yesterday. Her hair was done so nicely by Eugenia. But she's going to look even better in the resurrection. So she's waiting for that. But she's waiting for something else, too. She's waiting for you. That's when her joy will be full. When you are finally rejoined with her. She prayed about that all the time, you know. Keith pointed this out, that she has this little 
piece of paper that was next to her bed. And on it was all the names of the people that she'd praying for. Your names. <laughs> because she loved you. And so she'd pray for, I'm sure, all of the normal things that oftentimes we as children pray for. Good health. That you would be kept safe, right? Because she loves you. But then also she's, she's praying for you and your faith. That you would stay within the Christian faith. Because there are so many things out in this world which tear away at our existence. And tear away at Christ and what we believe. Her prayers are going to be answered. Her waiting will be over. And then you shall be with her. God, keep you in this faith, steadfast to life everlasting as he continues to serve you, just as he served Mary and just as she served you. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.